today we're testing the cheapest survival gill net on Amazon and we're going to be doing it through the ice. Find out how well it did. We were supposed to be able to paddle this pond today because we had some warm weather coming in. It's pretty early for ice over and we completely missed gill netting season. So I don't know if you joined us on the last one, but we tried to ice fish this without much success. Well, with no success at all. So the rods are out. We've got a gill net in. So I got this cheapest gill net on Amazon. I think under 15 bucks or something delivered right to my door. Branded as a survival gill net, came from China. The label says it's new. It's not reused. This is not a commercial gill net. And the reason it's not a commercial gill net is because they're completely illegal. You can't possess any commercial gill netting, period. So this is a real treat for me. It's something I wanted to do since I was a kid to be able to toss a gill net in a lake. Can't do that in any of our lake because they're completely and utterly illegal. And even if you're a commercial fisher, you can't go in a back lake and toss this in. And we want to get our fish out of here before winter sets in for good. So what we're going to do is drill a hole all the way across the pond here so that we can get our gill net in and then we're gonna string it across. And if we have to, we're gonna use some of our feed and that should get the waters chummed up and get them moving in. But I suspect once one fish gets in there or two fish gets in the net and they start flashing around that a bunch of other fish are gonna come in for curiosity sake and get caught too. So the real question is, will this cheap survival gill net actually work if you needed it? Look at your local laws, make sure that it's legal. If it's uh, not legal in your air, do not have it with you because it's like a 20,000 plus dollar fine for even possessing them. So don't be driving around this in your boat when you're fishing, especially. That was easier than I thought. It's like Inuit fishing now. Who knew we needed an ice scooper? You know, somebody in the comments is gonna say, you should have just drilled one hole and shoved the net across and pulled it up the other side. That ought to do it. Nice line all the way across. We're gonna see if this net's gonna work. Look at that, new, made in China. How about that? All the way from China, cheap Amazon net some floats on one end and some sinkers on the other end. I'm not sure how big this netting actually is, if it's gonna work for our fish or not, but we are soon going to find out. It looks like it's a small, but I'm guessing the fish are gonna to try to push through it. And then the net, this netting is gonna kind of break a little bit and then they're all gonna get tangled up. That's the hope and then twist around. We'll, we will find out. It looks super brittle, I'll tell you that much. It's gonna cover this back up because this thing is sharp. I wanna keep it that way. If they don't swim by naturally, we're gonna chum it with some bait. Oh yeah, there's lots of fish going through there. I see a whole school of them. I don't know if you wanna look at it, what it looks like in here, but it's like as soon as they pull it out, yeah, it's gonna be unravel, it's gonna unravel it in a mess. Like I don't know how they put this together because I didn't want to uh, yeah. risk messing it up. So I think we just get the two kayaks probably put together in the middle and then we'll figure out which way this thing goes. And this is a one-time use deal. Yeah. So we gotta get it right or else, well, probably if we just throw it in there, we'd catch fish in a ball. The main concern is that we don't want to injure and lose fish. My main concern is I don't want to fall in the water. <laughs> that's a good second concern. <laughs> no, that's my one concern. <laughs> All right, well, let's see how it goes. We got the underwater camera in, we got the GoPro down there. Using these kayaks doesn't totally make it safe, but it's dispersing the weight over a big area. And also if we fall through, we're just gonna float anyway. And we don't wanna put our foot where it doesn't belong. So keeping an eye on for any dark spots here around the edges. Okay, so there it is. Don't screw this up, anybody. I've never opened this up before to have a look at it. So it looks like the sink ends over here. Yeah. You got a knife on you? Shoot. Nope. Maybe, maybe this is, maybe they put a bow in here from China. I'm tempted to just rush it, but. We do that. Yeah, yeah. Looks like it's they wrapped it some funny up here. It's like I'm hungry. I need to eat. It's a survival situation. <laughs> Get that thing unraveled, then you just end up with a big mass of stuff. Okay, Me? there you go. Yeah. Okay, so now okay. you can grab that end. It's forty. I think it's forty feet. Yeah. That's oh, look at that. That's impressive. Like this is actually gonna work. I'm gonna stretch it out here, see how far we can go because we're not putting this back in the box. I'm gonna try to cut this. We're not gonna be able to keep it. Like it's, once we get fish in here too, they're just gonna go crazy. It's all gonna get tangled and raveled. Well, we'll just buy another one. It's a cheap Amazon net. We're just gonna chuck it in there and see what happens or what? 
So I'm caught on something there. Can you wiggle that out? Can we Go wiggle that out? The, okay. do, do I have to move or are we going to get it out? Ah, shoot. Okay, we're in we go. Yep. Okay, let's get this, the sinkers in there. And then there's floats on the top. You get it away from the, there. Away from the edges. Because it wants to catch on everything. Well, there's flaw number one, Mr. Cheap Amazon net. Yeah, the float is, the float is actually heavier than the weights. So it's sinking down. Oh, that guy's in the net. Yeah, I, I can see the net moving. Yeah. Which way is he going? He's going that way. Like, we don't want to fight him on yeah. the net. He's caught. Your net is way high on that side, I can now tell, because he's pulled it. Oh, he's caught up good in it. Yeah. Yeah, we got him. Hey, if we get one, that's a success to me. He's dead. Dying, anyway. Hey, that's a win. <laughs> yeah, got one. <laughs> Woo! -hoo! Smaller one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah you yeah. gotta match the net size. But you can kind of see, like, over here, the stuff that's on the bottom over here, this stuff over here is two feet below the surface. But now he's got that pretty wound up. Yeah, and he's gonna keep making a mess of it too. Yeah. Well, that worked. That worked ish. That worked. Ish. We'll say it worked. We'll say it worked. Yeah, the net needs to be definitely longer. Can you feel him pull on it? Yeah. Yeah. So are we pulling this whole thing up? Let's pull it up. Okay, so we got one. Are we going to put it back down? Yeah, I don't know how this is going to come up super easily. Oh, we got two fish. Yeah, you got one over there for sure. Yep. I do think we've caught the smaller of the fish. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to come up too good. I think the fish also messed up the net <laughs> pretty bad. Messed up the net bad. Yeah. That's one of the... Oh, here I can feel the weight on... There's one. There's a good one. That's a good size one. Yeah. That's, that's about the norm. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get them up without... I mean, we can leave this net in here and let it work while we do some ice fishing, too. I'm going to throw him up on your deck here. Yep. I think that's probably the best way. Because yep. he's going to freak out as soon as I touch him. I'm presuming. I don't want to lose him. There we go. That's a nice fish. Yeah. So probably about the biggest one you can catch from this net, right? Well, he doesn't like to be touched, that's for sure. Ow. <laughs> Your hand. <laughs> I, freaking, I, I hit my hand perfectly. I don't know if that killed him or not, but that's my best go with a <laughs> with a plastic paddle. <laughs> he's not moving anymore, so that's a good sign. We got one more left. He looks pretty tuckered out. I think he's dead from stress. The other guy. We're almost floating now. We got we got three. That one's new. Oh, he's halfway through though. We got to be careful with that guy. He's only tailed. Okay, try and see if you can get that guy. He's good. He's not moving. That guy's about to slip through though. Scoop him out. Oh no, he's fine. He's all, he's all, yeah. Well, see the size of the net we have here. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's, uh, it's only like one inch. So it's mostly, this is for more panfish. We need something with a bigger gap. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure if we would keep this net out here longer, we would definitely catch more fish. Like that's how easy it is to get the fish out. No, they're not going anywhere. But it's definitely, the, it's the wrong size net. So you gotta match it to the fish that you want. It's not a very durable net. It's a one-time use, survival kind of deal. Smash them there if you want. Yeah. <sighs> it's hard to hold these gloves. <laughs> it's hard to hold regularly. There we go. But if you stretch this net across before the open water closes up, for the winter yeah next year you could leave it overnight and essentially come back for 50 whatever 100 fish whatever yeah for sure well it works yeah it ta it's tangled that net up so badly though like this one's really bad yeah this guy's messing with it <laughs> if i can get some of that slack out and just pull them right out of there i guess we don't have to worry about hooks <laughs> i'm thinking like there's going to be a hook in here somewhere but <laughs> <laughs> there ain't no hook there's no hook in there there you go. Uh, I just don't want any of this stuff to go into the water. No. No, for sure. Not into this little scrappy bits. Yeah. Hey, that's a success. That's a win right there. Oh, I'm floating. Hybrid fishing. It's the cross between ice fishing and kayaking. <laughs> there we go. Grab a couple sticks or something. It's going to put a log through here. Just a stick so that we can 
do gill net proper, which is to actually do something else while you're fishing. <laughs> it's the whole idea. I don't know what's more fun. I actually find that this is more fun than ice fishing. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ice fishing was just annoying. Oh yeah, there's a good one. Maybe get, try and get we might try to get him out. Yeah, if he's, we, we have him in there. We don't want to let him suffer for no reason. Uh, no. If we can get him out. Okay. Oh, there's two. There's definitely two again. Yeah. <laughs> there's one, I don't know if you guys can see it. You might be able to see it on the angle there. We've got another two. We underestimated this net. We don't want to horse him in here. Oh, and that guy's rolling it all up. Here we go. He's almost out. Yeah, he was almost out. We would have lost him. Yeah. That other guy brought it off and rolled it up. The it's, like they, it's like they planned for it. <laughs> Scupper. Scupper. <laughs> Clean that right out. There we go. So that's that. Four on the deck and one, one in the water still. Oh, that's cold. I need my rubber gloves. Check out that hole. It's not bad for a few minutes work. Well, it's working. It's working like a charm, actually. I don't know if you can see every once in a while, you watch that stick over there. It's kind of like an ice fishing indicator. So every once in a while it'll twitch. So it means we've got a fish on. Oh, and our aerator started working again. That's pretty cool. Oh wow, it broke that whole ice off <laughs> in yeah. no time. We might yeah. get enough sun and might break it up. Actually, by in another week or so, this will all be open. Yeah, and then we'll have to move the aerator over here. Yeah, the aerator, the aerator goes over here. Yeah. Because this area we're going to try to keep, well, this is the best spot for the fish anyway. This is where they hang out the most. Best spot for the fish. We can continue to feed them over the winter. And the ice will get thicker over there so the kids can skate and play hockey and not fall through. The kids? <laughs> and you. We, we, can go ice, we, we can go skating over there. We can have a whole hike, hockey game over there. That'd be pretty cool. You guys look forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. So big shout out to the dugout dude. Thanks a lot for the aerators. He actually sent us another aerator because of the positive comments you guys left. So we didn't have time to install it. But by next spring, oh, we got, we got a whole bunch of things planned for next spring. This pond is going to get a second leg. So... Dugout dude's gonna get his aerator. We're gonna have two aerators, and there's a big reason we're gonna have two aerators next year. So stay tuned to the pond series. It gets to the point where ice fishing, it's like difficult. <laughs> well, it's kind of like you got half an inch of water out here. We broke the big crack here. Sliding around on kayaks, next thing you know, you go right through and just let the net do its job. <laughs> so much easier. Yeah. We got to move our aerator. Our aerator is over at the other side of the pond and we want to be able to skate over there, play hockey. And also our fish are on the far side of the pond over here. So what we're going to do is go run and grab the tractor, bring the tractor down here because it's got forks. And then we're going to move the uh, aerator from the far side over to the near side where it's going to have its permanent residence. And then we have a second aerator coming for the spring, which we'll put, well, we'll figure out where we're going to put it. Depends if we do another dig or not. Good to go. Yeehaw! Hopefully it'll come out without breaking off. Well, if I remember right, we didn't put a... Well, it's still blowing it, just you couldn't see the bubbles. Yeah, it's just not super strong, maybe. Yeah. It's going. You hear it. Yeah. We'll give it a new home. Okay. Guide me in and hopefully we don't roll into the pond. <laughs> Now we gotta find the angle again. Mark's, <laughs> Mark's pretty good with solar stuff. I'll let him figure it out. <laughs> we we're looking at uh, pre pre so winter solstice. Is that what it's called? Winter solstice. Winter solstice. Thirty days. 
30 days from today. I yeah, think. and then we'll be in the clear because the days will get longer. Is that how it works? Yes. So the sun's over here. So we need to angle it. Well, it's, it's pretty close. Maybe a little bit more? Yeah, just because of the trees. Yeah. But I can't really turn it too well. Here we go. It turns and tilts. Ish. I think we'll just run with that. And give it as much down as possible. And there's clouds just came in, so we're certainly not going to get it fired up, but I don't think we need to chip it. It's running. Up. It's running. Is it running? Just. Just, yeah. yeah. Like the sun, it, it's just going to get clouded out. It's right. Oh, it's going to hit right now. There you go. Yeah, we got like two seconds though, because look yeah. at the sun. Now it's firing away. Yeah. Anyway, we'll just, we've got our line already made, obviously from our gill net experience. So we'll just run it out until we run out of cord, cord of cable, or not cord of cable, it's hose. Hose. And then we'll go out to the middle there and just drop her in. So I'll do that with the kayak. I'm not going to walk out there. This spot's probably right here. Yep. So you yeah, don't want to go any further. <coughs> You could probably drop it right there because by the time you sink to the bottom, you're going to use up your last eight to ten foot. Yeah. Okay. I want it facing upwards, right? Yeah. So when you drop it, see if you can hold it and then drag it. You guys want one of these aerators? They're super, super helpful for any backyard pond or backyard farm pond or whatever. They're, they're meant for dugouts. Anyway, we did another whole separate video on just this aerator. So go check out the description if you guys want to order one. Super awesome. You don't need any electricity, just put it down there, put your hose out there, drop the stone, and you've got air into your pond. Perfect for any kind of backyard application or farm application. So if you've got a big pond, you can have multiple systems. Super easy to put together. In fact, out of the box, it was blowing air. That's cool. Being the steel, right? Yeah. So all these fish are gonna go to land on her. Uh, this is our gift for getting to use the pond. There's mm -hmm. still probably 150 yeah, yeah, fish <laughs> left. So we're just going to gut them, uh, scale them, and we'll just debone it real quick. So we did find we caught the smaller of all the fish, not necessarily the big guys, like the biggest ones here. And I think, you know, it was just luck we caught them, but we need to get just like a bigger sized gill net. I don't know if you watched that date night video, but Courtney gave me this as a gag gift. It's got the boss because I'm the boss. She kept putting in quotes. I'm not the actual boss. I'm just the boss. Mark's just over there. He's going to rinse the fish off and then we'll bring him back up here and we'll do a boneless, uh, whole fish boneless. That's my preferred method right now for cleaning the fish up. All that feed, all the nutrients. We'll feed the bugs. We'll feed the little fish fry. Whatever wants to pick at it, probably a turtle too. So what I've done is just gone down the backbone here, ticking off all the ribs. So that's normally attached here. So that's one section that I haven't done yet, just to show you. So we're just gonna cut through there and that separates it. Now, bone-wise, you still have the vertebrae here and then there'll be some bones in the fins and the top fin here too, there'll be bones, but that can be pulled out after you've cooked it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna scoop right underneath the rib here and then we're gonna take out, if we are if we can do it properly here, my hands are a little slippery with the gloves on here, and we're just gonna scoop up underneath and we're gonna fillet this out. And this I found is the easiest way to keep the most amount of meat on your trout. But you can see that's all that's left for waste and that's not a heck of a lot and you can't really eat that. I mean, you could cook that too and then you could try to grab a little bit. I did mess up a little bit here but uh, what you're left with is basically all boneless. There's always a couple bones you might miss there, but you can pull them out and you can see, I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then when you stuff your trout or butterfly it, continue up, you can do a butterfly trout if you want to cook it. You can open it right up by going all the way out to the tail, like so. And if you do that on the other side, then that trout will open up nice and flat and then you can cook it a lot better on a barbecue or uh, in the oven. And then you should also remove the scales. There's not that many scales on this fish. Come get him! Come get him! Come get him! Get him! 
You're such a tough dog. You're such a tough dog. Fishies. Delivery. Yep, fish mm -hmm. delivery. Hello? Here's your cut of the fish. There's your fish. Thank There's you. Your fish. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks for letting us use the pond. You could have taken the heads off. <laughs> They're looking at it. What? Me. You gotta make fish head soup? No. No? No. No? Not just, gonna happen? Just barbecue fish. Okay. Well, here's, here's some bars too. Is Give this? one to Kirk. It's bison. Oh, nice. See if you like it. Anyway. Bison cranberry. Enjoy the fish. There's only there's only gonna be bones in like the backbone. All so right. once you cook it, just take the backbone out, and then there may be some small, very small pin bones that probably won't bother you. Just cook it whole. Put like your seasoning butter without the head. Whatever. <laughs> the head's the best part. Yeah, sure. I'll throw them back in the pond so they can be with their friends. You can do that yeah. too. Yeah. Alrighty, done. Ah, it's nice to be on the dry land. Now you can just take a lure. And cast it down there and you can reel it in. <laughs> what do you think? You could try. You could try. <laughs> <laughs>